Hello, I'm Sally Pointer. It's a beautiful morning. It's only about half past five and it's the day before midsummer. Just right for a little spot of hedge bothering. And today I'm after stinging nettles. A perfect fibre plant at this time of year. The nettles are beautiful at the moment. The ones that I'm looking at in the hedge here are probably seven foot tall. The important thing for our purposes is they've started to flower. This is generally a good indication that the fibres in the stems are nicely developed will be good to make fibre with. I'm going to break some of these off a little bit above ground level. You don't need to go right to the ground. It's actually been shown that the best fibres are a little bit further up the stem. You don't necessarily have to use gloves. If you're more comfortable doing so, that's fine. I tend to just make sure I can see my nettle. Get down to the bottom. Snap it off. And we'll take the leaves off in a little bit. I'll collect a few more, be back with you soon. Back in the garden, we've got our tools ready. Gloves aren't essential, but most people find they're more comfortable, avoids the stings. I've got a little piece of wood to work against. I've got a small pestle, it's come out of a pestle and mortar set, that's for beating my nettles. Again, not essential, can be useful. A thin bladed knife. Now this is an old fashioned table or butter knife. Very thin blade, quite flexible. You can use a piece of flint, you can use a more modern knife, but most people find they get the best results if the blade is quite thin. Cup of tea, well, that's just me. I always find it easier to work with a cup of tea on the go. Let's have a close look at these nettles. If you look at the stem, you'll see that it's square in profile with a strong ridge running down each face. That's where the nettle fibre will want to split into long ribbons when we peel it. Also take particular note of the fact that you've got these leaf joints. The fibres are at their strongest in the straight section between the joints and it's not uncommon to find that they snap off at these sections. So when you peel your bast fibre, you want to take particular attention to those. The other thing to watch out for is if your nettle is branched. Quite often if there are branches, you get a knot of fibre here and that can make it a little trickier to work. So I find the very best nettles of all are straight without branches with quite long sections between the leaf joints. All I'm going to do is pop a pair of gloves on, run my hands down the stem, that's going to take off all the leaves and all the prickles and from here on in I won't need to use any gloves. First preparation I'm going to show you is the simplest. We're just going to remove the outer bark, the bast layer, which will have the fibres in with it. You don't have to bruise the nettle first, but it's often a little bit easier. We're just going to whack along the stem, just crushing the surface open. It's not a heavy force, but if you concentrate on the leaf nodes, those little jointy bits, that can help you get a nice clean removal of fibre. Now that stem should split open with the thumbnail very easily now. We're just going to break it open. Sometimes a little bit tougher just at those leaf nodes. Now inside the nettle is a woody pith. This can be quite pale later in the season. It's relatively early still, so it's still green. We need to remove that. Just snap the nettle back and that green woody part will come away. You can often pull the fibres off very, very easily once it's been bruised. If there's any resistance at the leaf joints, just take a little moment longer and work those off.
All right. So what we have here is a ribbon of nettle bark. That was the outside, that was the inside. Now remember when we looked at it initially, that we had those four grooves. This nettle ribbon is going to want to split pretty much along the line of those grooves. And you can usually divide it into at least four parts, very, very simply. Now, if all you want to do is make a strong string, you don't necessarily need to do anything else to prepare your nettle. Yes, you've got the green bark still in place, but that can add quite a lot of strength to straightforward cordages. What I would recommend is that you split it down into as many sections as it will easily go to and then hang it to dry for a few hours. You need the moisture to leave that nettle fibre before you can make a cord that won't shrink when it dries. If it's too dry when you come to use it, all you need to do is damp it slightly. So that's our first preparation. That's ready, that can just be put to one side. If I want to process it more, it's worth scraping the fibres. At the moment this is a long bundle, but we know that the length of the fibres is only really at its strongest bit between those leaf joints. So what we need to do is scrape off some of the excess bark from the outside, which will reveal the fibres and give us a cleaner process. So just make a convenient bundle out of your fibres. Get your table knife. I put it under my nettles, my thumb over the top. You're not going to be pressing hard enough to cut yourself, and even so, you'd have to try quite hard to damage yourself. And just start stroking along those nettles. Quite a lot of material will come off in the early stages. Don't worry too much about that. The knife will be snagging on the leaf joints. It'll be taking away bit, bits of bark. If a huge bit comes off, just reintroduce it. You see a lot of slightly slimy green stuff on your knife. Just take that off as you go along. We're scraping away that wet green outer bark. And even after just a few scrapes, if we look at it closely, I don't know if you can see that, the fibres are starting to show up quite clearly. They're these fine parts. And they often look quite light, almost white, against the green of the bark. Just keep scraping. You don't have to apply a lot of force. We're not trying to cut through any fibres. We're just trying to scrape away any extra green bits. Now after a little while we're going to want to work the middle, so unfold your bundle, work along the centre section. Another thing that you can do is use your board I tend to put it on my lap for control. Put your fibres flat on the surface and then if you scrape against the board, it supports the fibres underneath and you can very quickly get down to those fairly pure fibres. Now it depends what you're aiming for. For this particular bundle, I want to get most of the fibres visible. But I'm not too worried about leaving a little tiny bit of the green bark, which is full of proteins and pectins to help glue it all together. That's going to give me longer lengths of workable fibres. And there's a growing body of evidence that suggests that particularly for prehistoric textiles, a lot of the spliced cordage is made with a little bit of the green stuff still on the fibre. And that's then removed by processing after the object is made or woven. So for most of my prehistoric projects, I wouldn't go too much further than this. We've removed most of that green woody stuff. I've got long, long strips of fibres visible, but there's a little bit of green still on there. I'll just tidy this up just a tiny bit more. And for a lot of my projects, that would be fine. Again, I'll let it dry before I'll use it. 
if you're after really really clean fibre you just keep going if we just work on a little section here work quite gently because you don't want to lose any more fibre than you absolutely have to there we are hopefully you can see those lovely clean fibres coming through that was just a few more seconds work now those again when dried out will spin or twine up very beautifully into a very pure fiber that won't need a lot of processing later so whether you're preparing for coarse string in which case just peel your nettles and split them before drying it for most cordage purposes scrape off most of the green material but don't worry too much about the little bits or for the very very finest fiber in which case just keep scraping gently your yield will be a bit less but you will get very clean fibers there doesn't have to be much more to it than that have a lovely time bothering your hedges and picking those nettles i'll look forward to hearing about what you've made with all your wonderful fiber